Greetings. Today I would like to discuss a question that might be familiar to some of the planners out there. What can we build today? As a planner, you would typically release your jobs for, let's say, a week, and then sometimes you find out some of the parts that are needed to build these jobs have been lost, or there's new demand that dropped in. How do you know what impacts the jobs you release to the floor? Well, you could look up every part in time phase, but there is a much easier way to do this. And this tool is called the Production Planner Workbench. I am surprised by the number of companies that I come across who are not aware of this fantastic tool. It has been around at least back to Epicor 905. You'll notice that I am in the Kinetic browser screens, but if you're still in classic screens and you're at Epicor 905 or higher, you will have access to this tool. You do begin using the tool by running this production planner workbench. The cutoff date here is the date that the jobs will start. So in my case, I said I've released my jobs through next Friday. So I'm going to look at everything that's supposed to start through next Friday. And I'm going to include release jobs because I have released them out to the shop floor. I just want to make sure that they're still okay to be worked. I am not going to ignore back flush material. Now, if you're a company that has VMI material that a vendor comes in and just restocks throughout the day and that's the only material you back flush, then you might want to ignore back flush material. In our case, we're back flushing almost all of our components based on the related operation. Ignoring future receipts and requirements. What I'm trying to do by running this process is find out what I have on my shelf today and then just make sure that it's not going to impact what I have going through the shop through next week, Friday. So I am going to ignore future receipts. I want to know exactly what's on my shelves. Non-stock materials, I'm not going to ignore those because those could be stock components that I have and I need to have them available when I start that top level job. The ignoring expedite PO suggestions, again, I want to know what's on my shelf, so I'm not going to um, ignore. I'm not going to ignore these. I'm just going to go based on what's on my shelf. Ignoring the past due on firm jobs, there are companies that will leave things like minimum on hand job requirements or maybe safety stock in an unfirmed situation while they're catching up other work. So if that's a situation that you're in, you could ignore past due unfirmed jobs. I'm not going to choose to ignore those because I know that those minimum on hands and safety stock are out there for a reason and they'll cause shortages in the future if I don't take care of them. My company does not have planning contracts, so I don't have to check that box either. So I'm going to just submit this process and it's going to run in the background for a little bit of time. And what it does is it's going to kind of do a soft allocation. It doesn't do any reservation or allocation. It just goes based on due dates and matching your supply with the demand. There is some prioritization or some hierarchy in there. So a firm job would have a higher priority. And it also looks at the job required by dates and factors all that in with matching up your supply to the jobs. So when the process finishes, you would open the production planner workbench. In the production planning workbench, I do have filters if I want to look just for a single planner, maybe just for a specific part. Um, but I'm going to just go ahead and run this wide open. So I'll hit my refresh button here. And you can see I've got three different panels here. If you're in an older version of Epicor, the panels are there. They're just in a little bit different spot where the parts have their own tab and then the jobs have a, an additional tab. So as I look at my parts, it's going back and it's giving me by default all parts. And I can see some of these here are highlighted in yellow. And as I go down the list, some of these are not, and it's all based on whether or not I have a shortage. So in this first case, let's look at, so looking at this 
is it zero zero C one A? I want to find out. I've got a shortage of a thousand. What is that going to impact? So I'm going to look at my materials for it's a part. So I want to see the shortages for this part. And I can see that job 2331 has got a shortage of a thousand parts. So then I would need to chase down this job or chase down the shortage to see where that shortage is at. If the job is short a thousand, more than likely it won't be able to be produced in time. Now I can also look at all of the jobs that we have. Looking at the jobs, it runs the same way. You can see I have some jobs that are highlighted in yellow. Those are shortage jobs. And I have others that are um, in gray or not highlighted in yellow. Those ones I have firm or full availability on. So here's my shortage checkbox as well. In this case, if I wanted to look at what is short for this particular job, I can change my bottom screen to show what is short on that job. And I can see that I am short that BS-M2-RD-150 for the specific job. Now, when I look at this screen, I can see that I have this released to the shop floor. So if we truly have that shortage, they're not going to be able to build this product. Do I maybe want to decrease the production quantity or split the job? These are all the decisions where you manage by exceptions. So we know that this job has a shortage exception. We're either going to have to make sure the material gets available. We pull the paperwork from the floor. We split the job. We reduce the quantity or whatever we need to make sure that this production moves as smoothly as possible. So sometimes we get the other type of question though. Occasionally they'll come up and they'll say, okay, we've got all of the work that we can do on the floor taken care of. Do you have anything else you can release for me this week? Well, with this dashboard, we can actually look at jobs with full availability that are supposed to be starting within, again, through next Friday, that's my parameter. And I can look and I can see, well, most of these jobs are released to the shop floor, but I've got these three here that I could release and know that there isn't a shortage according to what is in the system. I hope you find the Production Planner Workbench a new and shiny tool for your toolbox. Happy planning!